Hi everyone and welcome to this week's UIF Bulletin. I'm Michael Carlo, the DA Shadow Minister of Employment and Labour. After a very long wait, the Minister of Employment and Labour eventually issued a directive last week for TERS for the period 1 July to 15th of August 2020. And applications for this period opened on Monday the 17th of August. By and large, the application process remains the same as it did for the month of June, but there is one key distinction. In order to be eligible for TERS for the period of July and August, employees have to fall into one of three categories, and that is to say that their employer, one, must not be able to resume operations because of the disaster management regulations, two, their employer must not be able to make alternative arrangements for vulnerable workers, that's to say people with comorbidities or who are over the age of 60, by allowing them to work from home, or C, the employer must not be able to use the resources of all workers because of operational requirements imposed by the disaster management regulations. And that means that the employer would have to introduce shift time or rostering and the like. Now, it remains to be seen how broadly or narrowly the UIF interprets these three categories. Obviously, we suspect that they might try and interpret the three categories in such a way as to narrow the pool of beneficiaries. But our advice is don't let that stop you and put your application in for July, August TERS. Another crucial piece of information is that new applications for April and May now have a cutoff date. And that cutoff date is the 15th of September. If your application for those months is already in the system, don't worry. But if you haven't yet made an application for the months of April and May, you need to get it in by the 15th of September 2020. If you have any difficulties, contact the UIF call center on 0800 030 007 and be sure to get a reference number so that you can use that as proof that you have tried to lodge an application for April and May before the cutoff date. One final thing, when the TERS directive initially came out, it said that in order for employers to apply for TERS on behalf of their employees, they had to have been registered with the UIF before the 15th of March 2020. That is no longer the case. Now, some applications for April have been turned down because employers only registered with the UIF after the 15th of March. The UIF is now revisiting that. And even if you registered after the 15th of March, you should be able to apply for TERS benefits for your employees. That's it from me this week. Over to Michael Bagram. Thank you, Dr. Koda. It's Michael Bagram. I'm the Labour spokesperson for the Democratic Alliance. One thing we've experienced over this period is the inability of the many bargaining councils, that's the old industrial councils and various industries, to organise themselves with regard to the UIF. It was innovative right in the beginning for the Department of Employment and Labour to contact the various bargaining councils and try to do a deal. You will recall at the beginning of April, the clothing industry and the hairdressing industry entered into agreements and arrangements with the department. This arrangement was much trumpeted by our minister and many of the industry players were excited that this was done on a central basis. The bargaining councils did not get any cooperation from the Department of Employment and Labour and certain individual bargaining councils had problems, more problems in fact than the general public and that's saying a lot. I dealt with the Laundry Bargaining Council over this period whose members were left high and dry, to corner phrase. It looks like the Bargaining Council system is actually archaic and invariably needs to become redundant. Other industries did try to band together to see if they could approach the Ministry separately, and this was just as unsuccessful. I know that the restaurant industry tried desperately to write as a grouping to the Commissioner and they were given no extra help, despite the fact that they tried for months. In essence, for five months, we've had down the line very little help from the Ministry and very little help from the Commissioner. I'm getting, still getting a constant barrage of complaints about non-payments stretching right back to the last week of March 2020. The last five months have left the economy in tatters and the workers of South Africa penniless and hungry. If anything, our government, and in particular the department, should hang their heads in shame. The entire effort highlighted the problems in the system, highlighted the incompetence of the staff, and highlighted some of the discriminatory practice enforced by our Department of Labour. 
Over this period, I've written to approximately 10,000 emails to various officials in the Department of Employment and Labor. I've literally got enough mail to fill a dozen lever arch files. At the beginning of this crisis, I accused the Ministry of Incompetence and I was threatened by the chairperson of the Labour portfolio. She said that she would be bringing disciplinary action against me as my allegations of incompetence were ill-founded and unfair. The accusation made then was minute compared to what the country has now experienced. We've gone down the road of sheer frustration and misery. Right from the beginning, the systems failed us, the staff failed us, and their offices remained shut. Despite a few good staff members in the department, the experience has been a nightmare from beginning to end. The entire system needs a rejig, if not scrapping. It bears a reminder that when employers pay into the UIF for the contribution on a monthly basis, they pay directly from the South African Revenue Services. Each time they pay in, every detail of every employee is included. It would be extremely simple and obvious to effectively play these individuals out when they're facing business closure, even for a short period of time. Not in anyone's wildest dreams did they think that this would lead to the unbelievable hassles that we're experiencing right now. The simple cure pointed out by the Democratic Alliance right from the beginning was to allow the revenue services to effectively pay everyone out. This could have been done within 24 hours of each claim, but no. The ministry saw fit to limp along and fall to the ground almost daily. The one thing that this pandemic has taught us is that the government is not able to serve the people of South Africa. It has also taught us that despite the fact that the UIF money belongs to the workers, the government was unable to pay back those monies that they received from those very same workers. The unfortunate lockdown has turned the workforce into beggars and for their very own money. It must be remembered that the lockdown is by decree, and it has shown that the, it's not the pandemic, but purely a structural problem of trying to flatten the curve. The government can't even handle its own lockdown. The mere complexity of the extension now that you've heard from Dr. Carter explains how convoluted government's thinking is. Over and above this, they have given us online port portals that hardly ever work. The phone numbers supplied are never answered, and this does remind us of the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. This is our last report today, but please keep on sending your details to us. We will look after you. We will make sure that you're answered. Thank you for listening to me. It's Michael Bagram.